Uh, to get started, we'll mix our Clean Earth ElectroClean. This you can pre-mix a one gallon container. It takes a quarter cup to one gallon. Uh, it, you can use tap water. I prefer to use distilled water. Not knowing what's in tap water could be a concern in the process. We we'll also use a Clean Earth Acid Activator. It also is mixed a quarter cup to one gallon, and this is used at room temperature where the electric clean is heated from 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'm going to pour this Legor room temperature, and we will be using room temperature today. In our first container here is where we have the electric clean. In the back, we have a distilled water rinse. In the middle container, we have our acid activator with another distilled water rinse in the rear. And in the front right here, we have our room temperature rhodium with our final rinse in the back side of the plating unit. The first part of this is going to be doing the electric clean. So I'm going to adjust the current on my rectifier to five volts. Now we're ready to go. I'm gonna turn my rectifier on to ensure that I go into the bath with electrical current already on. I'm just using a piece of copper wire today and we're going to do this electric clean process for about 30 seconds to a minute. So in the electric clean process, we're removing any oils and residues to ensure that the surface is super clean. Very important. If a part has any type of rouge or, or finger residue, it will affect the adhesion of the rhodium in the end of the process, and you won't get your desired result. So the longer you clean the part, the better. Now that the electric clean process is done, we're going to move it to the distilled water rinse. And we're gonna leave it in here for about 30 seconds to a minute ensuring that we remove any of the excess of soap. Now the thing to know is that this particular soap is an alkali-based soap, and we do not want to bring an alkali substance into our rhodium plating because it will affect the acid level in the rhodium, which is important in the plating process. Next, we'll move this to the acid activator, which neutralizes any of the remaining alkali soap and activates the surface for plating. Leave it in here for about 30 seconds to a minute. So while we're in here, uh, these are all magnetically stirred. I prefer to have a magnetic stirring versus moving it. A lot of times, jewelers will tend to move the part around on a hook to get the bubbles off of the, from the plating process, which is, is a good idea because if you have bubbles on the surface and you're not getting them off, they could affect the adhesion of the rhodium. But it also will affect the amount of current going into the part as the part bounces up and down off the hook. So I prefer stirring the liquid versus moving the part. You get a more consistent current in the plating process. Now we'll be going into our rinse, and these are all distilled rinses. In this particular system, I would like to change my distilled rinses about after 15 mountings, because you'll tend to build up soap and acid activator in your rinses. It's important to keep them clean. So now the part has been clean and acid activated and is ready to go into the rhodium plating process. So you can clearly see we have a yellow band and we'll put into the rhodium for about 30 seconds. I'll need to adjust the current. I like 3.5 volts for one mounting. If I had four or five parts, I may up the current a bit, but for one part, 3.5 volts is a good number. Now we're ready to plate. And so we're gonna leave it in here for about 30 seconds. And that should be good. Now we have a white gold ring that has been rhodium plated. And we'll go into our final rinse. 
And there you have it, a beautifully plated rhodium mounting.